Alrighty then, folks, we are back with a... This technically isn't episode 2. This is episode 1.5. This is a mission from the DLC, which will get us some things. This is the end of what I've actually played also, just so you know. But anyway, so this menu will go over most of it later, but basically it's, a, it's exactly what you'd expect, you know. List of the stuff we have, list of the people we have, which we have uh, four people here and our commander is magically level 10. I'll never use these guys though, so they're probably going to stay at that level. Just so you know, I'm not a big fan of ships. We can spend money to customize our things, but it's prohibitively expensive, and we don't have very much money right now. Just cool. We'll probably be using that quite a bit later, but not on these guys. Well, yeah, I can't upgrade the amounted heals, which would be the only thing I'd want on an actual ship. But we're probably going to get rid of the Fang Ray pretty quickly. Usually the main character gets an upgrade about 10 missions in, maybe 15, and then he gets a fine or they. Because it can be either male or female in most games. Um, After 15 minutes, uh, not 15 minutes, it's like 35 missions, something like that. You get this, like, second final form kind of thing. Yeah, and then there's also this, which I'm not exactly sure of. It looks like we get a skill tree where we can spend points for shooting people down to get abilities. Or upgrade our, our people's abilities. I don't know if it's just the main character or everyone. Not exactly sure. We'll look into that later. And then, yeah, eventually we get, like, power parts. Uh, we can... Yeah. Isn't that what... Uh, customization is anyway we're actually gonna play the game now because we'll figure this shit out later it's fine but yeah um we don't actually have to keep our characters in their mobile suits and i'm really bad at keeping people in the series they're supposed to be in so i might just give people some random stuff unless they have uh, modifiers or benefits or something for being in their own series as mobile suits but we'll probably if uh amro and char are in this usually they're both really overpowered so we're probably going to give them, like, the best uh, real robots we can find them. I mean, like, you might want to check the machine to see if they have orders or something. I know they're doing the whole, like, the main character shouldn't be there kind of shtick, but literally, like, it's like everything points to, yeah, they were there, they were supposed to be there the whole time. Just accept it. But whatever. Um, these are actually two characters from, I think, OG. They might have been in the original games, too, I'm not exactly sure. But this one turns into a tank, and then the Huckabin, which is the other one, is like the all-around mobile suit kind of thing. Though... Uh, I wonder if Velt's psychic. Is it psychic or telekinesis? I think it's psychic, though. But the original pilot of it had to be psychic. And the Grunks. I always forget the name to that one, but it turns into a tank and a fighter plane. And it punches. I don't remember these characters, so I don't know if they were in the older games or not. They might have been, though. Velvet text. Yeah, the Huckabin. Oh, and they're powered by black holes, so... Just another reason why turn A is probably in this game. I know turn A is not in this game, but I'm going to keep saying it is. Just accept it. We're in the new correct century, after all. Oh, if you don't know, turn A takes place in the correct century. That's why I was joking about the new correct century. Because it's not UC, it's the new UC. But I believe both of these units can move then attack. I might be wrong, though. Yeah. So, this is a special scenario, so they can't give you SR points or it'd screw up the game. I'm pretty sure they have an internal counter on it, so it would be very bad if they added more numbers. It wouldn't know what to do with itself, so we just gotta kill these six guys with... Yeah, six... eight guys. Yeah, I, I can count. 
Well, I just gotta kill these eight guys with these people. Some of their attacks are really cool, though. And we want the demo on. I'll eventually start turning them off, but for now, they're gonna stay on. Like, after we've seen all their attacks, there's no point in constantly showing you it over and over again. So I'll probably start turning it off after that. Alright, after this episode, we're gonna turn the voice dialogue down a little bit. Probably back to where it was, because it's actually okay before. Maybe a little bit higher. Wait, can we transform you yet? I remember tank form just being, like, way better. No. We probably have to, like, go into a battleship to do it or something. I don't know. Sadly, rocket fists aren't an instant kill. Yeah, I expect all of them are going to come attack us and we'll be able to hit back, which is pretty cool. Or no, at this point we can only evade. I'm, I'm actually going to skip the battle on this one just because, you know, all it is is evasion, so whatever. Like, they have almost nil chance to hit us anyway. Yeah, they have like 14% chance to hit us. If you guys want, I can start showing you guys them standing, or slightly dodging missiles, but eh. It's not going to be that interesting. Oh, I didn't point this out in the last episode, but if you'll notice on their, their HP, there's energy. Oh wow, she actually got hit. What are the chances of that? Yeah, there's that bar that says energy underneath. Basically, the more we hit people, or the more attacks we do, the less energy we have. If you run out of energy, you can't do anything. But yeah, I'll, I'll try to edit this down, all the voice dialogue down in post. But my bad, I thought it would be a little quieter than that. 80, 20, 30 is generally what you do. Or uh, 80 voice, 30 sound effect, and 20 background music. I'll play with it after this to figure it out. Yeah, so for the most part I've seen, you can only do one counterattack, like you don't get to choose which counterattack you do. You just get one. The Huckabin does that thing that I really don't like, that they like highlight the pile or the cockpit. You know, they painted it red for some reason. I really don't like that. Yeah, so the punch thing is or no, that's the punch thing. We have a one to two attack range, which does the most damage. So apparently we are we oh we're three spaces away. Sorry, that perspective was really weird. <laughs> My bad. Let's actually go after this one. I'm pretty sure this will kill it, so... Shouldn't be a big deal. Yeah. This is the one I like. They don't have it... I don't think they have Code Kiosk in this. Because I didn't see, uh, watch who's it in the opening thing, but, um, the Lancelot, which is Suzaku's mobile suit, or Nightmare in Code Geass is, like, my favorite just because I love the idea of a mobile suit, or a Nightmare using an actual sword to murder things. I don't know. It's just funny. Yeah, we're just head Vulcaning this guy. 
Alright. <laughs> oh, that. Good to know. That makes uh, their mobility go down, but the reason I did that is I just wanted to see the animation. You'll notice I'll do that occasionally. I'm all about the pretty pictures, yo. Oh, there's that action button at the bottom. That lets us switch attacks, doesn't it? It's been grayed out for a while, so I hadn't actually considered it. I guess that makes sense. God. Oh, hey, it's bits. Or not bits, those things from uh, F91. I forgot what they're called. But the Riflasa from F91 had those. They're basically death chakrams. They're really bullshit in UC Climax, though, because the only way to dodge it was to hope you didn't die. And they did that a lot. Oh no, we don't get to switch it. Spirit commands? Huh. Um, support, which is that other blacked out button, is counter uh, is support hitting with another unit. Oh, I should probably have skipped that. Oh well. Yeah, you get to hit the enemy with multiple units if you use support. Which can be very useful later. I don't know if there's any downside to doing it, though. In some games, it makes you, like, slower, like you have less uh, chance to dodge, or other ones you can have multiple units get hit. I think it was Z, where you had, like, the squad of three, so... So that, like, if you went and used a support attack, you would actually, like, hit all three units instead of just one, or something like that. Yeah, we're gonna turn the... this is the punch one. Yay, she leveled up too. We don't see how well she leveled up, we just know that she leveled up. And yeah. More Leap Slasher. He's ironically our highest leveled character now. Mind you, that was like twice the units we fought in the other camp or the other battle, so yeah. I hope we get that sniper mobile suit from the from Jay. Like I really like that one. I can't remember the name to it right now, but Didn't they just build that, like, last week? How do you already have an encyclopedia knowledge on it? Damn it. I just have to assume they're really bad at maintaining that manifest. Yay, we got parts. We don't really know about power parts yet, though. Yeah, do I need to explain, you know, equipment? So basically, this one gives us more HP, energy, armor, and mobility. We'll probably use that. I don't know if they're one, like, you can equip them and if you take them off they get destroyed, or you can just use them on everyone. I'm gonna assume you can use them on everyone. 
But what it looks like, we get two slots for everyone, and probably eventually later when we follow the skill tree, we get more slots. Oh, no. Those might be single-use only. I thought optional parts were single-use, and then power parts were all the time. But anyway, folks, if you enjoyed the episode, you should like. If you didn't, you should dislike. We'll be back for more probably next week. I haven't decided yet. I don't know how the schedule's going. Um, But I hadn't said it in the last episode, but I meant to. Basically, I'm going to do about five episodes of this, see how it turns out. If I feel like it, I'll continue on. If not, I'll stop. Um, I haven't... Like, I've completed Super Robot Wars games in the few in the past, but, like, usually it's I play it for a month or two, I get bored of it, I come back to it after, like, a while, I start over, and then I beat it that time. So I don't know how it's gonna turn out. Anyway, folks, good night.